In this video, we will have a look at various methods to convert black and white images to a mask, but also touch on how we can convert mask to black and white images. If you want to know the best way to convert a black and white layer to a mask, make sure you watch until the end. So let's start with the most common and probably the quickest method. Make sure the black and white image layer is selected and enable the channels panel. If the channels panel is not enabled in your workspace, enable it from the Windows menu. Now that the channel panel is enabled, let's do a quick preview of the channels by clicking on a color channel. By clicking on a channel, Affinity will hide all the other layers and only show the selected channel. Notice how all the channels look the same for black and white images which means we can use any channel to make a mask. Sadly, we cannot create a mask from a channel in the composite section. When I right click on a channel, there is no option to convert it to a mask. However, when we right click on a channel in the section below, we do have the option to create a mask. This section contains the channels of the selected layer. This is why we need to make sure that the black and white layer is selected. Awesome! Affinity created a mask for us. Easy peasy. To demonstrate the mask, I can apply it to the yellow fill layer below and when I hide the original black and white layer, we can see how the mask is being applied. Let's move the mask back to the top. Now suppose we want to convert a mask layer to a black and white pixel layer. We can again use the channels panel, but this time we need the alpha channel. When we view the composite alpha channel, we can see the black and white image we are looking for. However, we cannot convert it to an image layer. As mentioned, the channels in the composite section do not allow this. But when we right click on the mask alpha in the section below, we do get the option to create a grayscale layer. Also, Affinity created the grayscale layer, however, we only get a white screen. This is not a bug. Let's look closely at our channels panel. Notice how only the alpha channel is enabled. A quick reset of the channels panel will enable all the channels again and our new grayscale layer becomes visible. Lesson learned, after working with channels, don't forget to enable all the channels. Now let's look at a second method how to convert black and white to mask and vice versa. In this method, we're going to utilize the feature that selections will be auto applied to masks when they are created. To demonstrate this, I can quickly make a selection and notice how the selection is applied as a mask when I press the create mask icon. I will use the channels panel again, but this time I will use it to make a selection. We're not going to use the selected layer section as we do not have the option to load this into a selection. But on the composite section channels, we do have this option. When I use the load to pixel selection menu item, a selection is made from the channel. With the selection enabled, I can now go to the yellow layer and add a mask. Because we had a selection, the selection is auto applied as a mask and we successfully converted the black and white image to a mask. Now let's do it the other way. We can make a selection from a mask by command or control clicking it on the layers panel. I'll select the top layer first as I want to add the black and white layer from the mask to the top of the layers tag. Now with the selection active, I can add a fill layer. This will create a masked fill layer based on the selection. Make sure that this fill layer is using the white as color. In my case, white was already the active color. I will disable the yellow mask layer and we can clearly see the white layer we just created. We now have the white from the mask. For the blacks, we can simply add a black fill layer below this layer. Before creating the fill layer, make sure that there is no active selection by pressing Command or Ctrl D. 
When I change the color of the newly created fill layer to black, we get our mask as a black and white image. If you want to make it into a single pixel layer, you can group these two layers and then rasterize the group. This will create a single pixel layer containing the mask in black and white. Pretty awesome. The laser selection specialist would probably apply the mask directly. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to add two fill layers, a black fill and a white fill on top of it. If I apply the mask to the top white fill layer, we get the desired black and white version of the mask. We can group it again and rasterize these two layers if you want a single layer. Here is the third way to convert a black and white image to a mask. We can apply a procedural texture to the black and white image. I'm going to use the live version, which can be added either from the channel panel filter button or from the layers menu. In the procedural texture, we can assign one of the channels to the alpha output and then assign the value 1 to the RG and B channels. This creates a semi-transparent version which we can use to create a mask from it. I will make a duplicate so I have a copy of this. On the duplicate I can now right click and select rasterize to mask. Let me apply this created mask to the yellow layer to check the result. Pretty awesome. Actually this might be the best way to create a mask from black and white and I will explain in a minute why. By the way, this procedural texture method cannot work the other way around. Let me move the mask back to the top and apply a procedural texture to it. If we say that R, G and B value should be replaced by the alpha value and the new alpha should be 1, nothing really happens. Maybe you guessed why, but the reason is that a mask layer does not have an R, G and B channel. So nothing can be shown in the document. Hope this makes sense. Let's come back to the best method of converting a black and white image to a mask. Let me quickly make a mask of the rose again using the lazy method. Easy peasy. Now let's apply this mask to the yellow fill layer. Perfect, we have a yellow rose on top of the blue as expected. Notice what happens when I move the mask around. To understand what is happening, let's view the mask only by clicking with ALT or OPTION on the mask. The black in the mask moves along with the white, creating empty spaces in the mask. The mask we created has painted blacks in the mask and because of this the blacks move along. For comparison, I will hide this mask and manually add an empty mask by ALT or OPTION clicking on the mask button which shows the context menu and then selecting empty mask. I can paint with white to create a mask. If I now move the mask, it works perfect. No clipping of the yellow. Because the black in the mask we just created was not painted or rasterized. In order to get the best mask, it is best to make a selection of the white by using the channels panel as I showed earlier. Instead of auto creating a mask from a selection, it is way better to create an empty mask first. Once you have your empty mask, make sure it is selected and fill the selection with white by using the edit fill menu. In my case my primary color is already white, so I can use the fill with primary color menu item. Awesome. One thing you will immediately notice is that only the used area of the mask is selected instead of the whole canvas. If I move the mask, all works perfectly and the yellow is not clipped in any way. When you create a mask from a procedural texture method I showed earlier, you get the same result. Which is why I mentioned that the procedural texture method could also be the best method of converting a black and white image to a mask. I hope you learned something new today and thank you for watching. See you in the next video.